everyone and welcome back to the channel. As I'm making this video, I've actually just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is a really significant milestone for me uh, and something I've been aiming for for about three and a half years since I first started this channel. Without going too deep on the whole thing, I just want to say a massive thank you really to everyone who's supported me on here and written nice comments and bought my sample packs and support me on Patreon. Uh, it's really my dream to turn this into a full-time career and I'm indebted to all of you uh, that this is slowly starting to happen. Quite a fun thing we've now been doing on Patreon is voting for the upcoming videos and I've basically been putting like 10 options down and everyone gets to pick what the next video is and I've actually come up with some really good uh, ideas for future videos and even though today we voted on this giving since the life video I think this is a, a really good roadmap for maybe the next month or two on the channel so I just want to show everyone this and uh, you'll probably see like all of these videos I would love to make from the rhythm roulette to the Akai and Emu videos there's loads of fun stuff on there to get into um, in the next couple of months. Okay, so diving into today's video, we're going to go through a whole bunch of different processes and techniques you can use to bring your synths and samples to life. And we're actually going to start with the thing I think is the most important, and this is reverb and delay. Now, reverbs and delay help give realism to sounds and give them dimension. Um, and there's something I definitely underutilized a lot more when I was kind of learning sound design um, and starting. I could never understand how to make these quite bland synth sounds. Uh, instantly sound better and reverb is probably the quickest and easiest solution for this and in my example here I'm actually going to show you what I've got is a really bland sine wave um, with just a little bit of re release so in this quick sample and logic simply just adding a nice reverb like this one which is quite an airy reverb maybe a little bit more and then if I bring out the release a little bit as well So it's actually just get even that simple reverb. We can also use these space and shimmer type reverbs and Valhalla Shimmer is one of my favorite ones to do this with. Um, and actually using multiple layers of reverb is sometimes a good thing to do here. So I've got my reverb from the Digitone going into a Valhalla Shimmer and I can take this fairly tame synth sound and turn it into a Vangelis uh, epic CS80 style synth lead. Alongside the reverbs putting the sounds into a space, we can also use delays, and delays are great for giving sounds a little bit of rhythm. Uh, now my favorite delay time to use, especially in drum and bass, I think this one is really effective, if it is a dotted eighth note delay. Um, and what I have here is a repeating ARP sequence, and this is where a delay comes in really handy because I don't have to go and change the notes up, I can actually use a delay or automate a delay on and off to give this passage, repetitive passage, uh, a bit of variation. I also love half note delays and I have banged on about these a little bit on my channel but one thing is I'm a pretty terrible piano player as you can probably tell from the examples in this video but I can get around it by using things like delays and reverbs and all these other tricks to actually make myself sound a little bit better and the thing about a half note delay is it kind of sounds like an art repeating so if you play your notes um, in, in a kind of specific way within that first half of the delay period you get this really nice repetition um, so it works in my brain a little bit differently th than other delays I treat it a little bit differently and try and play into the delay a little bit more maybe.
One other thing I love to do with delays is go a little bit more experimental with them and this H delay is amazing for this because you can turn this feedback control over 100 which essentially starts to feed the delay back on itself uh, which is like a dub delay trick and then also if you change the delay time if you set it to milliseconds and then change it whilst the delay is repeating it actually changes the pitch of the delay. Um, so using those two in combination with controlling the, the level and the dry wet of the delay, you can actually get some really cool uh, and interesting dub effects. And of course you can combine these experimental style delays with these huge expansive space and shimmer reverbs to get some truly incredible sounds. So I wanted to put reverb and delay at the very start of this video because they're arguably the most important but certainly the easiest way to add realism to sounds. But actually I think movement is probably the other thing that's really important to bringing sounds to life. As well as the performance related parameters like note position, sustain and velocity, we also have four crucial things we can use to add this movement to our sounds. We can use LFOs and all the various waveforms to modulate sounds automatically. We can also use different envelope types like ADSR which is really common and also multi-segment envelope generators where you can put in your own point to modulate parameters over time. Recording in automation is another great way to add expression to sounds just like I showed you earlier with that delay trick. The final thing I love to do is to mess with parameters live and record it out and this is essentially called resampling. And this is something that was done a lot in the 90s and with the birth of the hardware samplers like the Akai and the Emu I have here, but actually has been sort of, it's a bit of a lost art these days. And I think it's such an important practice. Um, and I love to use this program called Twisted Wave, where I can essentially set record and I route my mixer back into Twisted Wave. And then when I hit play, And so rather than having to either draw that in via automation or to modulate it and to fine tune the parameters, actually just messing with this stuff with your mouse or a MIDI controller um, is a really great way of, of capturing a live performance. Volume is probably the most obvious place to start when we're talking about adding this motion to our sounds. And actually for the June 2 video I uploaded quite recently, um, I did a lot of this where I had this layered uh, pad I created for that video. And if I open the automation, you can see I've got two lanes um, where I've just automated a gain control here. Um, but what it is, is these sounds can be a little bit static and actually lifeless if they don't have this movement of volume over time. And so such a simple thing like that can really turn these sounds around uh, and bring them to life.
when we fight beside you. My people. You young pup. Filters are amazing and they are definitely something I underutilized when I first started making music. And one of the reasons I think is because the auto filter in Logic, um, which is this like native filter, has such an unattractive UI. I almost subconsciously, subconsciously thought that they weren't that important and probably use things like EQ more. But actually, uh, over time, I've learned to love filters more and more. And this Filter Freak uh, by Sound Toys is incredible. And I have actually uh, an Akai here uh, and an Emu. And both of them are quite renowned for having a uh, pretty tasty filters on them and all I can say is this filter freak with all these analog uh, style emulation uh, kind of saturation engines you can run it through um, is the best sounding software filter I have used and so I jump to this one pretty much all the time when I'm going for a filter. When we're talking about actual techniques we can do with filtering, probably my favourite one is just slow and subtle low pass filtering on things like pads and chords just to give them a bit of that motion. Another one of my favorite things to do in Filter Freak is actually to come into uh, the settings here and to change it to envelope. And when you play with the threshold, you can kind of see the, the meter here coming in, these red dots. And you essentially set it so it's hitting the meter. And if I pull down this frequency, And as long as you have slightly slow attack and release times, you get this subtle filter movement. So it takes a little bit to get the settings right, and you definitely want it to be slow on the attack and release, but it just gives the sound a little bit more character as that filter's moving around relative to the signal that's being fed into it. Another amazing way to breathe life into your synths and samples is to use pitch movement and there's lots of little tricks we can do here. Now I've come back to the other example of using this sine wave. So I've got a sine wave with a bit of filtering to add some harmonics to it and a release and then also a nice reverb on it. Now in Logic's uh, quick sampler, we can set up the modulation here. And so what I'm gonna do is essentially a vibrato, and this is probably the, one of the most common things we will do with pitch. And so you just set your um, target to pitch, and then I'm gonna use, put this on time divisions and use an eighth note, which I think is one of the things that sound, sounds best with vibrato. And you can see we get this wobbling. But that's obviously quite an extreme amount. So if we take it way down, So just that's that nice bit of movement that makes it not so static. And another cool thing you can do is add a bit of a fade can make it more natural as well. So it slowly ramps up to that pitch mount. So this is the first thing we can do with pitch. And here we're using like a triangle wave or um, a sine wave to do this vibrato. But actually if you come into the waveform and change it to random, this is another trick I love to do to get that pitch instability. So the key here is to go for quite a fast rate. So I've gone for 7.7 .7 hertz here. 
and then actually a very low amount on the pitch and you get this sort of tape wobbling. Now one other thing we can do to enhance that pitch warbling sound is to actually do pitch bends and what I like to do is actually put my pitch bend on one semitone here, the range of it, and then you just kind of flick your pitch wheel. And it sounds like a tape sort of warbling in and out. So you can get a quite authentic sound this way actually pretty easily in a sampler. And I'm just doing this with a sine wave here. Both panning and stereo image are really important for giving that three dimensional character to our tracks. One very common trick I've done in my most recent track is opposite panning where we have one element over to the left and then the response to that element is off to the right. So we have this call and response between the two synth sounds. Another panning trick I love to use is to slowly modulate the pan from left to the right and this is amazing for effects to get them swirling around the stereo field. Now Pan Man is a great plugin for this but actually if you're in a sampler like in Logic Quick Sampler a very easy way to do this is also just to uh, send a, an LFO like a sine wave or a triangle wave LFO and send it to Pan and so you can see it move from side to side here as well. Another great thing to do to add stereo width to sounds is use a ping pong delay and even if your sounds are in mono or they're just dead down the middle a ping pong delay just gives them some nice stereo width. Going back to this simple sine wave patch we looked at earlier, one thing you can also do in Logic which is a bit of a trick is go from your quick sampler to the main sampler. So if you're on quick sampler you can just select main sampler and it will convert it into this. And then in here if you go details and you can turn on unison and so we can detune the voices of this sign. There is of course loads of other processes and plugins you can use to bring your sounds to life and things like saturation and distortion for adding that crunch or grit or warmth and then other types of modulation like phasing and comb filtering and flanging these things are all amazing but a little bit beyond the scope of this video but I think what I will do is just finish with a few audio tricks which I love to use um, and are very simple to implement. One trick I do all the time is actually just taking an existing sample copying it down to a new track and then pitching it up an octave or down an octave and then layering the two together and one thing that's also great here is to put like a shimmer reverb if you go up an octave you can put a shimmer reverb on and then you get this nice thicker layered sound and you can use that as a variation than just having the original sound at the original octave.
In that instance, we were layering a sound basically with itself just pitched up uh, 12 semitones, but I also love layering sounds with other sounds. And in this instance, I've done uh, one of my girlfriend's vocals actually, which already itself is a bunch of different takes of her vocals I've stacked on top of each other. And then I've layered that stacked vocal actually with this woodwind up here. So if I show you them individually and then together,